open up the door. You were always a terror. Maybe 20 seconds, 15 seconds. Any last words? Any regrets? Any hopes? No refunds? No credit card numbers? I know everything and everyone is so post post 9-11 nowadays, but I'd like to go back for a moment. For Christ's sakes, think about it. It's already been done. There's a map, a guide. I'll skip over to my friend whose former fiance was killed and how the former kept getting dropped from his descriptor and how my friend joined the FBI or how my co-worker's husband who took the last elevator went on a two-year drinking binge after his buddy had said, I'll take the next elevator. And I'll skip over the lockdown on 14th Street, running out of eggs and milk because we didn't have proper ID to cross 14th Street, and the quiet streets with no traffic, and we had no TV, and how our neighborhood coalesced around a couple of bars, and how I remember not understanding the view, not seeing that one tower was missing after taking a shower, and then seeing the second tower fall, feeling the rumble, and waking from the dream and running out our door to find my wife, now that the phones were dead, and the subway suspended. No, my purpose here is different. I want to do what little I can to attack a term I hate, ground zero. The phrase will forever evidence the insane lack of imagination within the Bush administration, or rather, the insane mastery of Karl Rove et al. to find a word or phrase which utterly corrupts reality in their favor, a phrase like death taxes or climate change. It would take a month of 9-11s to match the immediate death toll of Hiroshima's Ground Zero let alone Nagasaki, or the tens of thousands who would die in the following months and years from cancer, burns, and radiation sickness. Imagine that. Imagine that. A month of World Trade Center attacks. It'd be like some Hiroshima advent calendar. Oh my God, sweetie. Oh my God, sweetie. Oh my God. 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 Oh my